We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are all way delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Chapter 5 for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Hi everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, this is part two of when loved ones are murdered as a result of gang stalking. Um, if, you have not, if you have not heard part one, you'll easily be able to find it in the playlist linked in the description box. Or the playlist related to uh, whatever social media you find this on. Um, when your pets or loved ones are murdered as a result of your targeting um, it, I, it's probably one of the most painful things you could go through um, I gave my testimony in part one um, thus far and hopefully no more I, I pray but uh, three people have been murdered in my life or two people have been murdered in my life three in all one innocent bystander who I did not know was murdered as a result of my situation and um, I know there are testimonies of others who um, have lost siblings has, have lost household pets um, you name it it is not an uncommon thing for them to murder out your family if they cannot get to you. And if you are unfortunate enough to experience something like this, um, as is the point of all these broadcasts, is to lead people to God, lead people to the cross, and to the love of Jesus Christ, and that, and to the truth of God, is that you cannot fight this without the blood of Jesus Christ. You cannot, you cannot get through your gang stalking or targeting successfully without being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is just the truth of these last days that we are living in. And we are actually living in the last of the last days. Um, I 
And of course the whole point of these broadcasts is to lead people not only to the cross and to Jesus, but to his truth, to to the word of God, to the Bible. Forget about all the man-made religion stuff. And That's your Old Testament, that's my New Testament. Throw all that stuff away. Um, the, the truth is in the entire Bible. It's all interwoven together and you cannot fully grasp it unless you accept it all. And um, So with that I'm just going to start off with prayer Father God in the name of your son Jesus Christ um, Please anoint and cover this broadcast That I could get it out to those who need it the most To those who may find themselves targeted That are lost that are, that are looking for information Or just looking for someone To listen to that can relate to them That understands what they're going through Because many people out there are lost and are in need of serious help and and are in need to hear the word of God in the gospel and please Lord open their hearts and just let it spiritually seep in spiritually lead them to this broadcast those who truly need it um, in Jesus' name Amen thank you Lord we love you Lord we love you very much So the last broadcast um, I featured, we talked about Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, uh, verses sixteen through eighteen. I actually used in my mother's funeral. Um, I'm going to continue because this topic is death itself has no terror for the servant of the Lord. And if you experience the loss of a loved one, particularly due to your targeting, I'm just going to say right off the bat, the worst thing you could do is act in the flesh and go in the way of the world and try to seek revenge or anything like that. In fact, that's exactly what your gang stalkers want you to do. Um, they generally operate above the law. And, um, and as many might... No, gang stalking is spiritual. The fight is spiritual. And it manifests, it begins in the spiritual. Therefore, you must walk in the spirit. And the only way to do that is through the sanctified Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Um, the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, our creator. Um, then you could walk through your persecution at times... Like a hot knife through butter. And and it's very important to study the word of God. And learn God's plan for humanity. I mean we're literally seeing the Bible come to pass right before our very eyes. Right before we speak. It's a very exciting time to be studying the Bible. Um, and understand God's plan about death. God's plan. I mean... Everything you need to know is in the Bible From the roots of gang stalking To the proof gang, so gang stalking exists To the recompense and vengeance um, The Lord Almighty will is going to avenge And the Lord Almighty has a plan for the dead The Bible tells us that there will be a resurrection of the dead The Bible tells us that this life is just temporary and fleeting and that our fleshly bodies are but shells, temporary shells. And it matters what we do in this life. And in return, we reap we reap from what we do in this life, in the next life, in the spiritual life, and what's coming uh, that lasts forever and that is eternal. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is rewarded day by day. For our, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more exceeding and external weight of glory. While we look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, 
For the things which are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You'll see the scriptures in the link in the description box below. And those are words that every targeted individual should really know. Continuing in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Um, we learn about our fleshly bodies. We learn about our life here on earth a little. And God really expects us to live as a human sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Okay, we are to mimic our Messiah Jesus. We are to take our cross and follow him. Um, because those who live by the sword die by the sword. And that is just a fact. And you will gain nothing. If you take up the sword, you will gain absolutely nothing. And you will win nothing. But if you take your cross and follow Jesus. And hang in there because... By the time anyone listens to this message, I tell you, we are in the last of the last days, and Jesus is coming very soon. So if you are unfortunate enough to experience something like this, or know somebody who does, know that the time of vengeance is so close and so near. So please hang in there and, and read your Bibles and build your relationship with the Lord and mourn with the Lord. Do not act in the flesh. It's very important that we step out of the world and abandon the, corru the corrupted ways of this world, acting in revenge. And gang stalking is not a Hollywood movie, despite all the communities out there and which are generally run by the perps themselves. Um, they try to influence people to um, do that, to take up arms and. Act in the flesh? No, you fight it through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is the truth they do not want you to know. And that is a fact. And I just pr pray, Father, in Jesus' name that 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 pierces people's souls. And, and that you open their hearts and minds to that truth. So in 2 Corinthians 5, it's there's a pretty interesting scripture. You'll see it in the description box below. Um... We learn about our fleshly bodies. We learn about our living sacrifice. And I, I tell you, these are very comforting words if you're mourning. Because it's only temporary. Because the dead are going to rise again in the great judgment. And if you accept Jesus as your Savior and enter into the kingdom of heaven, um, you will see your loved ones again. Just as the scriptures say, our affliction is, our light affliction is but for a moment. And that is a fact in this life. It is our light affliction is but for a moment. And doesn't even compare to the glory coming. Which is eternal and lasting forever. God is so good. God is so gracious. He is a gracious giver. And once you get a taste of how good he is. I tell you, you can't get enough. So if you are unfortunate to go through something like this, I just want to inspire you to dig your heels in the Lord and spend time in your Bibles and because all your answers are in the Bible, I tell you, and it's that's the truth. And uh Second Corinthians chapter five. Let's check out what the word of God says. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. So, to get some context here. Our flesh is but mere temporary and but a shell. And we have eternal spiritual bodies that last forever. And when it says, If we sow that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. When Jesus comes and redeems those he wishes to redeem of our fleshly bodies, when the sin of Adam and Eve get redeemed, um, we are rewarded by our works that we do here on earth. We are saved by grace alone. But we are rewarded in heaven from our works and deeds that we do here on earth. 
And I tell you, taking a life and revenge is does not please the Lord. Um, we're supposed to turn the other cheek. And and when we get our spiritual bodies, it, it seems the Bible tells us that our reward, or at least partially, will be reflected in the clothes in the clothing of our bodies. And if we do wrong, if we have shameful deeds and and do not behave ourselves and condemn each other or whatever have you, um, we run risk of our naked shame being shown. And um, that's not something I don't think anybody would want for eternity or in heaven or in the kingdom of God. Where there is no lust, there is no jealousy, there is no hunger, um, there is no thirst. Um, Surely you want nothing but a, a clean white robe in heaven. So reading on in, in verse 4. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that morality might be swallowed up by of life. I'm sorry. And that's exactly what I was just talking about. We want to be clothed. That morality will be swallowed up by life. That's a really this is really beautiful words here. Now he that has wrong excuse me, now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. When you lose your loved ones, uh, you know that they, they, they're with the Lord. And to be absent from the body is to be with God. Um, the Bible tells us to crucify our flesh. Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And if you're gang stalked, um, that'll become very believable very quick or very under, con, very conceivable very quick and so it's important to apply the blood of Jesus on your doorpost and to be washed clean excuse me profess that we are all sinners in need of a savior we are all fallen and we all have that evil inclination and the idea is to get born again and and to walk away from our sinful lives and just want to serve the Lord and and it's not some you know do it right or else it, God meets us where we're at we just have to be willing in our hearts and he meets us where we're at um, I could testify to that for sure. And hopefully you could get sanctified in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Just ask the Lord and build your relationship with God. That's what gang stalk, that is the purpose of gang stalking. It's supposed to bring you to your knees and you build your relationship with the Lord. And um, I pray people do that. And I apologize, I know I'm not the best reader when I'm going over these scriptures. But I really urge you to go in the description box and read these scriptures, okay? Um, because they are uh, really fantastic and really stuff to meditate on and learn about. Especially if you're in mourning. Um, these are the answers. These are God's answers. This stuff is real. It's not some religious indoctrination thing. The Bible proves itself. This stuff is real, guys. And... Um, You can find refuge and comfort in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. You can find the strength. You can find the hope and joy in Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Because the dead are going to resurrect. 
The graves mean nothing. The dead are going to rise from their graves when Jesus comes on Judgment Day. And and I, I tell you that day is coming very soon. So if you are unfortunate enough or know somebody to experience the murder of a loved one as a result of your targeting, know that vengeance is nigh. Know that the resurrection, judgment is nigh. And I tell you, it's not a time to take revenge. It's a time to throw yourself into the Lord. Because I tell you, there will be vengeance. Jesus said at least two times in the Bible that everything in the dark will be revealed in the light. Everything hidden will be revealed. Nothing will remain hidden. What is whispered in secret will be shouted from the rooftops. I think that's in Luke 12. There, there, are, there will be no secrets. That's why all this stuff, all this truth is coming out now. And why we're just being bold and doing whatever we can to serve the Lord. And try to lift up those, just pick up the lost. And not hold back any truth. And I tell you, Jesus Christ is the truth. Because God says so. And because countless of others who have been saved, their testimony says so. It's supernatural and it's real. And you can have a real living relationship with the Lord. And and you could ask Him yourself about your loved ones. I tell you the truth. So our earthly vessels, our, our, our bodies are but mere temporary shells. And it's just a test and a litmus test. And it's what we reap and uh, it's what we're sowing for our eternal bodies, which last forever. And that's the deal with our life here. Um, your gang stalkers... Um, will not stand in the judgment and are risking eternal hellfire I mean no no one can speak for God's judgment but um, I tell you he cares and he's in every bit of your persecution whether you have a relationship with him or not he's in every bit of it you'd probably be surprised Um, there's a good chance that the Lord himself is actually protecting you from a lot of attacks even if you don't know him Especially being gang stalked because your enemies are, are um, at their most bitter root are enemies of God and are satanic and it's biblical and it's ancient. And yes, they're all compartmentalized and um, every acronym there is and every government and every police department, every first responder, yeah, it's all in there. The wheat and tares grow together. There's dark and light in every side, but... Um, this stuff is rampant in our society and our global society today and the victims suffer in silence uh, like like I generally do um, like many I know generally do um, or many I know generally have all their lives who have been targeted all their lives and um, I tell you this stuff is coming to light and if you are not targeted um, I'm just going to repeat myself for a trillion time. Um, if you want to do something and you know, reach out to those who are targeted. If you want to help the situation, you don't go after the perpetrators. Because vengeance is the Lord's. And that's, a, that's an eternal promise. And that's coming soon. But comfort those who mourn. Comfort the victims. Just believe that this is happening to them. Believe that they're targeted. Lead them to the gospel. Lead them to the cross. Because I tell you, the targeted individual community is the most likely to receive the gospel and at the same time, need it the most. So um, that's kind of why it's been put in my heart to be doing what I've been doing. I just, I don't know, I just decided like this is where I want to sow my seed. This is, I don't know, I, I mean, I don't know how much time we have left, but I just want to, you know, we're not promised our next breath, but uh, I'm perfectly um, content 
spending my last moments um, reaching out to the targeted individual community because there are just so many out there that are completely lost and we had to lead them to the cross lead them to the word of God lead them to Jesus lead them to the actual truth that they are searching for and um, for whomever may be listening they could you know, witness onto these guys wit- witness onto these people if you want to help that's what we do that's how we help that's how we fight back we provide a a support network um, and lead them to Christ that's how you punch these persecute these murderers and rapists right in the nose that's how you punch them in the nose and that's a fact God will do the rest and that's a fact that's a promise that's coming very soon so I really pray this was a blessing to you guys I'll keep this short I'll I'll cut this out and uh, I really just want to recommend reading these scriptures and checking them out uh, because they're very beautiful Um, I'll do my best to repeat them and put them in video format on this video and I pray I can get this out Um, you know I've I've had three murders in my targeting situation two of which have been my own mother and my best friend's father who I've known literally my entire life senseless murders because these perpetrators are psychopaths as the bible says their consciences are seared like from a hot iron and that's who we're dealing with um but to fight this stuff in the flesh is nothing but a lost cause you have to go deeper and you fight it eternally. You fight it in heaven. You fight it in the spirit. You fight it with Christ by your side. And that is a realistic fact. That can happen very easily. Um, I pray this is a blessing to you guys. And um, I really pray this broadcast gets to, gets to whomever needs it. Uh, please share these these videos and this playlist Um, if you find someone that claims to be a targeted individual lead them to the cross lead them to the bible witness onto them show them the biblical evidence of this stuff show them what they're looking for because that's what they're looking for Um, this is their only salvation this is their only hope and it's a great hope to have because it's a hope that will not fail God is faithful and true and he cares and is so good beyond our wildest imaginations. He delivers. He takes his time. He delivers. Uh, I tell you that from experience. In my walk, in my targeting, with my relationship with the Lord. As hard as it's been, you know, the Bible tells us, like in Psalm 23, He makes a table for us in the midst of our enemies. And I tell you, that table is always very wide. And very big and overly generous. We are in need of nothing. And, uh, you know, once you get a taste of how good the Lord is, you can't get enough. And He makes a way. Even these really hard things, He always makes a way. He always does. And that way is always pretty, quite generous. So no man can ever boast. It's all, it's all in God's strength, it's all in Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He is so good. He is so good. God bless you all, guys. Thank you for listening. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive who are left till the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words.